Hi everyone, welcome to Hunters Connect. Today I'm standing here in beautiful southern Arizona chasing an underappreciated species called the javelina. And the whole point of this video is to take you from the start to the finish. So we'll show you the techniques for finding these creatures, uh, how to hopefully harvest one, how to clean it, and how to make it into some beautiful table fare for you and your friends. So without further ado, let's hit the field and go out and find them. There's a bunch out there, some big ones. Well, we found some javelina. We just crested this ridge and like right away looked out there and saw a bunch of black dots that were moving. We're gonna have to, our wind's kind of funky. It's kind of blowing that direction, but we're just gonna make it like a slight little like crescent moon uh, hook over there and try and get in them. They smell, they have a really good sense of smell, but they don't, uh, they don't see very well, so. We're gonna go and try and kill a javelina. Everything's pricking me. Welcome to Arizona. Hey, dead bug. Yeah. Oh, you got a big one, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty big. It looks pretty big. Oh. Holy crap. That's a. Look at that thing. That is seriously so much fun, guys. If, uh, if you're out here. I would honestly just come out and do this without buying a deer tag. Like, I would just come down here. I wish, I think, I think they now give you two tags for these guys. So, this is fun. <laughs> it's like, it's super easy is the thing. It's like, you get the wind right. That's what we did. We saw them over the hill. You get the wind right. They can't see that well. And then you just get in close. Before we get back to the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and gut this. And I've never done it before, and the, the fact of the matter is it really doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you get the innards out, you're fine. So I've gutted deer before, and I'm just gonna take that uh, knowledge of doing that, and I'm gonna apply it to this javelina. Um, one thing you gotta make sure of with the javelina is they do have a scent gland on the top of the back. So when we do start skinning it, we'll be very cautious of that. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna make an incision right here on the stomach and then I'm gonna go up and cut the, the throat and then I'm gonna come down and cut around the anus and eventually I'll be able to 
pull all the innards out and then I'm going to throw it on my pack and we're going to head back to the truck and uh, throw it up in a tree later this afternoon, get the hide off and then we'll quarter it up and then it'll be ready to eat. The way I'm going to do this could translate into, you know, a feral hog that you might hunt in Texas or in the, in the south. Um, so there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Uh, for javelina, it's a little bit unique. They have a scent gland back here that you really want to avoid. Um, but the general premise behind this is to get the hide off and to not touch a bunch of this hair and get it all over the meat. Uh, you just want to do it as cleanly as possible. So we have it hung up in a tree today, luckily, but you can also do this on the ground. Um, it does, you don't have to do it this way. You can leave the, the internals in and uh, do it the gutless way, but here we've already gutted it and I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking the hide off. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying my best to not get any hair on the inside. Uh, with javelina, you really wanna make sure that you try and keep it, the meat as clean of hair as you can um, because they have an oil on that scent gland that uh, make, can taint your meat. And so all the cuts around, like I'm gonna cut around this here, all these cuts are from the inside. One thing that you do want to try and do is to keep your like if you're going to touch the hair with one hand just keep that hand outside of the inside of the meat and use it the whole time. So and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of feeling where this, this head is and I'm just cutting down until there's nothing really left except for uh, a bone column essentially, which is its spine connecting to the head. Like that. And it comes right off. And so what you want to do with this back right rear quarter is you just take your knife and kind of feel where that bone hits and you just bring it up. And on the back quarters you're going to eventually hit a ball and socket joint. And you're just doing your best to keep your knife kind of hitting the edge of the bone so you don't leave a bunch of meat on there. But if you do leave some meat on there, you can always come back and cut it off. No big deal. And there you can see that ball and socket joint right there. Right there's that ball and socket joint. Okay. And if you just kind of hit it, a lot of times it just kind of pops out. So just keep on going. going just keep on going around the pelvis bone trying to salvage as much meat as you can and there's a hind quarter you want to keep this shank meat on here and a cool way of doing that is just cutting in going up I like to keep mine attached And then there's a joint right here that you want to cut. And once you do that, you see how there's a, a bone in here. 
you just kind of want to cut that tendon all around and we're going to try and get some more meat off of this and then that back shank is still attached right here most of it. I have some on there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And then you take this over your knee, break it off. Then you can take your knife and kind of cut the rest of that tendony stuff off. There you have it. There's a hind quarter. All you gotta do is repeat that same step for this other hind quarter. For the sake of making this video, I'm gonna show you guys one of each. So the next thing we're gonna do is the front quarter. And the front quarter is pretty easy. You just wanna take your knife and start here, about here, and trim as much meat as you can off of that, the ribs essentially. And then you just make your way down into this, into its armpit, basically. There isn't a ball joint in the front quarter, so it's pretty easy work. You just kind of take your knife and you trim down. And you can also try and keep as much neck meat as you can on that. And that's front quarter. And we're gonna do the same thing we just did on the hind quarter with the shank, because this is good meat and you wanna save it. So. What I'm gonna do, and a lot of people do this differently, but this is how I do it, is I take this and I just kind of cut the meat off of the bone here and back here. And then uh, I keep that attached to the uh, quarter itself. I'm just trying to get as much meat as I can off of it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to Take off this lower part of the leg, and you see right there, you just kind of wiggle in, your knife in there, and the joint kind of, once you hit that tendon, it just kind of comes off. So, once I'm here, do my best just to kind of break her off. Come back in with my knife. We have a front shoulder. Let's take the back straps off of this guy. So, I'm gonna start here, cause we're gonna keep this part as, as the rear, this is the rear quarter still. So I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna come in here. I'm basically just gonna go down these lines here and you can feel along the spine here. You can just take your knife and go straight down. And like I said, be careful not to puncture inside the ribs. But you can probably hear this on my knife. I'm going over the ribs. Take it up as far as you want. I'm gonna go about to right here. I'm just gonna kind of feel where that, that muscle comes into. It comes to about right here. And then you can either do it from this side or the other. I'll do it from this side. And you just want to fillet that meat off the bone. There you have it. One really nice back strap. These are the inner loins. A lot of people leave them because they don't know how to get to them. If you uh, are doing the gutless method in the field, you can cut something, like when you take the back straps out, you're able to come in and feel that loin right here. And this is the same with elk, deer, antelope, what have you. You're able to come in and feel that loin right there. And that's a really good piece of meat. Because I'm hanging it right now, it's easier for me to access it like this 
So I'm gonna cut it out right here. So, two tenderloins. Little guys, but tasty. All right, so now that I got this javelina skinned and quartered and uh, cleaned up, we have Hank Shaw in camp. He's a world famous wild game chef, and I think he can do a lot better job cooking this javelina than I can. So uh, I'm gonna take you into the kitchen and he's gonna take over from here. So this is the javelina that uh, Michael shot. So these are the shoulders, and I'm gonna braise these shoulders slow and low and then we're gonna pull the meat off the bone and I'm gonna make kind of a tropical stew with them. There's this really cool stew in the Yucatan that uses a little bit of coconut milk and sweet potatoes and a little bit of achiote paste, which uh, is also called annatto. And annatto is what turns cheddar cheese yellow. Regular cheddar cheese is white, by the way, if you didn't know that. So we're gonna follow the process, but first we've got to braise the meat and get it tender. Uh, I don't normally use this kind of stuff, but it'll add some more flavor, so why not? A bit more of the garlic. This is like high-end camp cooking. <laughs> bit of oregano. bay leaves. A little bit of dried chili. These are chipotles in adobo. Add a little bit of extra flavor. So that is gonna sit in the oven for like four hours and I'll check on it from time to time and I'm, I just want it to be tender enough to get off the bone. It doesn't have to be like super tender because we're gonna stew it a little bit later. Looking better though. Probably take another hour, maybe even two. All right now I'm gonna heat water to rehydrate some chilies. So these are uh, chili morita. Morita means blackberry in Spanish. And that's what these guys are. It's a dried chili. 
And if you are familiar with chipotles and adobo, you know, the, you get the little cans of chipotles and adobo, that's what these are. Except they're rehydrated and canned in a, in a sauce. So I'm, they're smoked, they're very, very smoky smelling, and I'm, they're gonna add this to the stew for the javelina. All you need to do is just bring it to a boil, turn it off the heat and let them rehydrate for a little bit and then we're gonna puree them. So this is achiote. Uh, in, in English, it's anato. This is an, it's anato and other spices. It's a, a, like a spice paste that they use in the Yucatan and in Central America. It looks spicy, but it's not. The red is from a seed that grows in Central America. And it's, uh, it smells sort of citrusy and floral and it's uh, it's gonna go in the javelina stew. So now I'm gonna get the chilies out of the soaking liquid and blend them in with the achiote. And uh, that goes into the stew with the javelina. Pro tip, you can always add more chili. Really hard to take it out. So start small and then build. If Hank Shaw made it, I can assure you it is excellent. It'll be one of those things you want more than just one serving. So have I mentioned how much I like this? Yes. Did you write a CWD article? 
So thanks for watching this javelina hunt. Hopefully you can appreciate the species a little bit more from uh, being out in the field, hunting it to the table fair at the end. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. We got tons of other videos kind of like it where you can learn how to hunt different species, uh, what have you. Thanks for watching and have a great hunting season.